The next uh, speaker is Daria Talturina. She's a board member of the International Longevity Alliance and also uh, the Longevity Escape Velocity or LEV Foundation that uh, Aubrey uh, is uh, um, founded. And uh, she also works for the Russian Research Institute for Health of the Ministry of Health. So welcome, Daria, and I give the floor to you. Okay, hello. Thank you, dear friends. I hope you can see and hear me well. So for many years, uh, longevity research community has been advocating for calling aging a disease. And uh, I know at least two examples when uh, biomedical companies decided, like had troubles to uh, test the compounds, uh, drug discoveries for uh, aging as a whole. And they had to do it for some other organs. One is, for example, uh, Professor Skulachov from Russia. So they invented uh, some uh, compound, SKQ, SQK, uh, which is an antioxidant. And we still don't know if it could help at least with some stages of aging because they had to uh, test it uh, with FDA even with dry eye for dry eye. They did uh, they, uh, get a permission to sell it as a treatment for dry eye, uh, but uh, they didn't find uh, invest another time uh, to test it as protect. So it was a real issue for R&D. Uh, generally, sometimes uh, governments were resistant to add aging to a disease list because they uh, need uh, international classification of diseases, not only for new R&D, but also for mortality statistics, uh, where aging was considered like a garbage court when uh, like, uh, doctors were lazy to investigate for the cause of death. So uh, basically, uh, there was a process of revision of the international classification of diseases from uh, version 10 to 11. And uh, we, with a group of uh, my colleagues, uh, decided to write a proposal uh, to uh, have aging included to the ICD. Uh, which first we looked at the extensive literature of our field, but there was a problem that uh, it was... Uh, Daya, can I interrupt you and ask you to go full screen? Uh, we wrote a proposal to the uh, working group on the new uh, ICD. Our proposal was based on only human data because animal data would not fit WHO. And... Uh, we also, there was a paper earlier, published earlier in 2013, what are the criteria of uh, a disease for ICD? So we checked all these criteria and we found that aging uh, suits the definition of disease by the World Health Organization by this criteria, not uh, less than, for example, as gamer diseases, because it's also, uh, there are gaps in understanding, but still it is a disease, okay? So what happened is that the working group of the WHO um, wrote us a reply. We were very surprised because we didn't write from any institution, just a group of enthusiasts. And they said that uh, what we mentioned, like various aging related conditions, part of them are already in the ACD and they proposed us to have a, a extension code, which can be combined with other codes, XT90. Uh, to produce new conditions, new diseases. Also, we added a definition of aging, which was uh, discussed with Aubrey. So here is it, aging related means caused by biological aging, which persistently leads to the loss of organisms adaptation and progress in old ages. Actually, we wrote something else, now they changed it. Uh, so anyway, that's how they have it now. So that uh, inclusion of aging-related codes was celebrated by the team of Lancet Journal. They published a paper that, that is opening the door to treating aging as a disease. And also they established a new academic journal, uh, Lancet Healthy Longevity, 
uh, it managed to become quarter one just in one year. So we can publish there too now. What we did, uh, so uh, also I want to give some um, credits to other colleagues from the UK, uh, Carl Import and Batley, who proposed to move this age code for aging related diseases uh, from temporality section to causality section. Uh, I think it is also more logical and it suits uh, better. So we published uh, uh, our proposal, elaborated it a bit, of course, it contains maybe 600 references and published it uh, in a journal. And thank you very much, Sven and other, some people who are there, who maybe, uh, who facilitated this publication. Actually, we got a lot of citations already, quotated, like uh, people cite this. So, moving, trying to move. Yeah. So what does it look now like now? Yeah. Okay. So this is an example how this combination of code looks like. Uh, well, the World Health Organization itself inscribed uh, this extension to some combination code. And here is example of other specific dis specified diseases of the blood and blood forming organs. So if we have some condition which is aging related and like aging of some part of blood and blood forming organs, we can uh, basically give it a code. And that means that we can develop therapeuticals against this condition. So the list of these conditions, which they already included is quite wide. For example, acquired immune deficiency. So we can develop therapeutics against immune aging and register them. So, and in some cases, uh, it may look redundant, for example, in hypertension, aging related is essential hypertension. So there are already treatments to hypertension, but we can develop now treatments, new therapies, which are targeting even early in life, some specific aging related processes, which we know, like, you know, cell senescence, for example. So it make, um, made things a little bit easier. In addition to, yeah, here is uh, other examples of such combination codes. Uh, but that is not our only win. There was another good story which happened uh, to uh, aging related codes in the ICD. For a long time, there was always a code which was called senility uh, in World Health in ICD-10, and uh, like all, and I think it was uh, aging related uh, debility, something like this, an American version of ICD. It's kept on changing, but in general, it was like old age senility. Uh, this code was mainly used uh, when somebody some person died in old ages and the doctors do not have uh, idea what uh, he or she died from. For example, here is death certificate of Queen Elizabeth who unfortunately uh, died recently. So officially she died from aging. <coughs> statisticians, uh, medical statisticians tended to consider it garbage code uh, and they tried to they distribute these deaths into other uh, causes of death when they calculate, you know, burden of disease and something. However, some French researchers um, did a study. They did autopsies of super centenarians. And in uh, some percent of cases, uh, they couldn't really determine what this person died for. And they uh, came to conclusions that it can be a real cause of death, aging, in really advanced ages. Uh, so in any case, uh, this code existed, but there was a protest against that. Uh, and a team of Brazilian gerontologists uh, wrote a, published an appeal uh, online and also in this uh, Lancet, I think, Health and Longevity, exactly this new journal, uh, calling that aging is not a disease and um, it should be excluded from the ICD. Uh, they actually targeted this particular code, old age. So what their arguments were, 
They didn't want unnecessary medicalization of the elderly. Uh, let us keep that. And also they thought that it could lead to ageism, that all, all, uh, all the persons will be considered sick like or ill people. Uh, we had to, our community had to reply on this. And there were two teams uh, which replied, co coordinating in coordination. First of all was our team with Ilya Stamber, Alexei Alexeyev, Yuri Matveyev. So, and in the same issue of the same health, uh, Lancet Health and Charity Journal, there was another uh, reply. Oops, oops, yeah. I fear to re pronounce wrongly Evelyn's uh, surname, maybe Evelyn Bischoff, and other people like De uh, Alex Jankov, David Sinclair, and so on. Uh, Andrea Meyer, she's a gerontologist. So uh, we both objected uh, the idea of removing aging. Uh, both teams objected uh, per se uh, from ICD. However, our arguments were slightly different. So we, we did not really mind of uh, renaming somehow this code, old age. So our argument was that we still need uh, advanced engine to be representative, represented in the ICD. First of all, aging does have a pathological effect and the, uh, we needed for just new therapist uh, development uh, to be registered. And that uh, we argued that this code has always been in the ICD. And uh, Evelyn and others, they argued that uh, they thought that they wanted to replace it with frailty. They argued that it is not a replacement. It is not indeed. That it is easy and again, we need longevity medicine. So in any case, uh, the result was good for everyone. Just one second, I'm struggling with this. System. Yeah, so the result was uh, that they have new code. It's called aging-related decline in intrinsic capacity instead of old age, which, it is, which was always there. So okay. what is this? How, where does this come from? First of all, uh, at some point, they published uh, synonyms of this code. Sorry for small... Uh, letters, but still uh, the synonyms of this new code, MG2As, are even also aging. And uh, basically we have a code for aging now, for aging as a whole. So now we can develop therapies for geroprotection, protection, generally anti-aging therapies and go register them. So what is this intrinsic capacity? It was a quite funny story of lobbyism. There was a uh, a period when the European Union tried to uh, develop priorities for its research program, Horizon 2020. And Eduard de Bonny and also Miriam participated there. They were very successful and they pushed uh, for money for aging, uh, biological research on biological aging. However, uh, there were some interests, uh, like maybe corporations, which also wanted to participate. And uh, there were some people from the group of industries of uh, food supplements or functional food, I would say, yeah, functional food. And most importantly, there was industry which uh, produced some uh, tools, devices to uh, facilitate all the disabled people. So they invented a division between functional ability and intrinsic capacity. For example, you have, uh, uh, if you're lo losing your hearing, uh, you can put this uh, hearing aid, so your intrinsic capacity will be bad, but your functional ability will be fine. And um, uh, basically, in this way, uh, the agenda of biological aging was diluted in this Horizon 2020 research program. However, we still know that despite this, uh, a lot of people still, a lot of aging researchers still uh, received grant of, through this program program, even if, if it is less than it could have been. Anyway, because of this uh, strange lobbyism in this uh, 
global strategy and action plan for aging and health, which was developed by World Health Organization in 2014, there was this strange term, intrinsic capacity, uh, which is uh, determined by many factors, health-related behavior, presence or absence of disease. So they also added that there are five subdomains of intrinsic capacity, neuromuscular, sensory, metabolic, cognitive, and psychological. So in any case, we actually was in the delegation at this World Health Organization meeting. Uh, we were part of the Russian delegation to, together with Vladimir Anisimov and Viktor Zikov, and we were like arguing, like, uh, what is this term? And uh, also we were arguing to include research section into the strategy. Actually, we succeeded with research section into the strategy. But it was a bit too late, uh, so the storm persisted. But now, look how funny is that. So we had two streams of lobbying, uh, which were not uh, for uh, anti-aging research, but they combined all together and produced quite a code which is much better for us than, for example, world age. So I think it's a very good uh, luck for us. Uh, so we now we have both two codes. First. Uh, just uh, aging related decline and in intrinsic capacity, which still needs to be defined, but still it's clear it's uh, aging, which uh, uh, also can be counted starting uh, early, for example, in middle ages. So now we can really uh, develop um, and register new therapies against aging. It is in the World Health Organization list of diseases. And also we have another code for uh, aging specific conditions, uh, which is called can, like this combination code and uh, the list is quite high. So I think that uh, these days uh, our, uh, our developers of new therapies are in very good situation, which has not been there before. And it is indeed possible to argue uh, and look for investments into this research uh, because it is not as hopeless in terms of money return as it was before. Uh, in addition to this, we see a change uh, in a new position of the World Health Organization, a new uh, sort of the thought thinking of aging. So if you go to just the page of the World Health Organizations, they write there wonderful things. At biological level, aging results from the impact of accumulation of wide variety of molecular and cellular damage over time. This leads to a gradual decrease in physical and mental capacity, a growing risk of disease, and ultimately death. I think it's a nice definition. Uh, so basically, we have a World Health Organization finally uh, taking aging seriously as a, a risk factor for health and uh, perhaps as a disease. Uh, as Ilya mentioned, there is a working group to define what is uh, intrinsic capacity. It uh, includes medical gerontologists. Perhaps we need maybe to put more efforts into finding what they do, maybe getting included. In any case, uh, it is indeed a very good development. And so please uh, tell everybody who is working in the field of R&D for aging, that uh, good times are coming and then now they can develop and register anti-aging therapies. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Daria, for this uh, uh, wonderful lecture. Um, so uh, are there questions? Uh, I haven't seen one in the chat. Unless I missed, uh, did he has a question? Yes. Yes, if if uh, if there are no other questions, of course, only. Uh, so uh, congratulations uh, once again, uh, Daria, and also to all people who were working uh, on this. Well, I was working on this, but for, from uh, uh, further away than uh, than most of you. Uh, congratulations again. Uh, and uh, like you said at the end, uh, the um, you said. Now the the field is uh, let's say open to uh, organizations for clinical trials. How to let's say push or how to make this uh, uh, more well known 
for these uh, uh, organizations for clinical trials because as far as I know, but I, I would I would love to be wrong, but as far as I know, uh, until now there are not so many uh, things announced, uh, especially when there is this famous uh, team study uh, not starting, but uh, there is a twin study, but nothing else as far as I know. Thank mm. you. Okay, so the organizations which do clinical trials are paid agents and they need to be independent by the law, by standards, uh, how they call it, good clinical trial standards, GCP, from the developer of the therapy. So they, they basically will not care uh, um, what to test, uh, they only care about quality of the uh, study. Uh, so I think it's important to advocate uh, this new opportunity just to inform investors, inform uh, researchers on that. Maybe so we're actually uh, re writing a paper and looking for a journal where we could publish it so to inform academic community, but it will be also good to spread the world and maybe spread the good news in uh, maybe some media, uh, websites uh, where which are read by this by tech people. So we just need to sh tell people about this new opportunity. Okay, uh, I think we shall keep it to the final question. Uh, Leon uh, asked in the chat, "Have you considered that the so-called standards of care uh, vary drastic dramatically among countries, meaning insurance will not authorize certain procedures for the elderly?" at the hospitals, which affects longevity stats, perhaps more than diet or genetic composition. Would you comment? Mm. Okay, we have USA where there is a commission, sort of, which decides which, uh, uh, which diseases will be covered by uh, insurance. And uh, for, other, uh, for other countries, for other legislations, it is very different uh, procedures. Uh, so it, each country is different, but the more will be there will be clinical success, the easier it will be uh, to move it uh, to uh, to proceed with in, uh, having uh, this insurance covered by insurance. Okay, thank you, Daria. Uh, 